Um, so now we're going to start the final session of the day. Um, and it's the third masterclass. Um, so I would like to invite the exec director of Cosmic Ethical IT. And it is Kate Dudson. Um, thanks, and, and thanks for inviting me today. Um, as, as, as you said, my name is Kate, and I'm from Cosmic. Most people call me Cosmic Kate, if that helps you remember my name. <laughs> um, I am a girl geek. I've worked in IT for um, about 15 years now. And before that, I was a civil engineer. So I come very much from the, the techie side of the world. Um, the reason I'm saying that is that the slides you're going to see from here on, I've actually done myself. <laughs> So there's absolutely no creativity in there. So please, please, uh, please accept my apologies for the level of creativity that's in there. Um, but we've been running a programme in, in Devon and Somerset called Love Digital. And this was our answer to, to the call for the Women's Broadband Challenge. Um, and the reason we wanted to call it Love Digital was because we wanted to show people, we wanted to show women that this is all about embracing technology. This is all about it, you not having to be a girl geek. This is about actually trying, seeing what you like, seeing what you don't like, and actually bringing that into not just your work life, but also into your home life. Because we've realised that actually, if you bring it into your home life, you're much more likely to adopt it in your business life as well. And you'll notice there's two other lovely ladies on the stage here with me. <laughs> this is Anita and Claire. And Anita and Claire are two of our um, ambassadors as part of the programme. They are not geeks, but they do love digital. <laughs> to get the link. <laughs> um, Anita is a, a, is a photographer and Claire um, owns a farm in Somerset. And so what we're going to do is split the session into two. The first part of the session, I'm going to talk to you about some of my favourite apps, some of the things I do in the day. And this is a bit of a taster to some of the sessions we've been running with our ladies in Devon and Somerset. And then what we're going to do is um, I'm going to interview um, Anita and, and Claire um, just to help them to talk a little bit about the way they use technology in their businesses as well. So if that's OK with you, we'll kick off and I'll try my best to uh, not show myself up too much. <coughs> right. What I wanted to do was talk about a typical day and how I use my phone. And the first thing I do is actually I use my phone as an alarm. Who uses their phone as an alarm currently? Pretty much all of us. It is the number one thing we now touch when we wake up in the morning is our phone. <laughs> <laughs> we touch our phones 215 times a day on average and did you know that 25 percent more men sit down now to go for a wee to check their social media profiles <laughs> <laughs> so it really has changed the way we do stuff <laughs> So what I wanted to start with is to say most of us use our phones as our alarms now, but actually this is a really interesting one. Does anyone use Smart Alarm? No, it's a fabulous one. It allows you when, you, when you, when you set your alarm, you set it for the time you want it to do. You put it under your pillow and it monitors your sleep pattern. So it monitors when you're in deep sleep, when you're in REM, when you're in moving around or whatever, and wakes you up at the time that's best for you to be woken up before your alarm should go off. It's fantastic. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not talking about the ethical side of things today. I'm just talking about some of the technology that's available. And the thing about this also is it tells you the quality of the sleep you've had that night as well. So actually whether you've had a good night's sleep or not. So that's the first one that I use. Who's, who uses their phone as their calendar? Pretty much all of us. Again, it's our central point now for our calendars. Um, and again, I wanted to share a different one with you. This is called Calendars 5. Does anyone use this one? It's available in, in apps and, and in Android. And the thing about Calendar 5 is it pulls together not just your work calendar, but your home calendar and your kids' calendars and your Facebook calendar and every other calendar that you want. It pulls it all together into one place and pulls together your things to do list. So actually, in one place, you've got all your reminders and all your thoughts and everything else into that place. So you cannot forget what you need to get from the shops on the way back. 
So it's a lovely one. Also, as you input into the calendar, you can just type naturally. So you can just say, I'm meeting John for lunch. And then if you've met John for lunch before, it goes into the normal time. It'll plug it into your calendar. It'll ask you what time or date it is. So you don't have to be quite so accurate with what you type in. This is all still before I've got up, by the way. Does anyone, hands up who looks at their social before they get out of bed? <laughs> this is admitting way too much, isn't it? <laughs> Most of us do. But again, one I wanted to share with you is Flipboard. Does anyone use Flipboard? Yeah, I love Flipboard because Flipboard allows two things to happen. It allows you to look and to see what's going on in your social networks, but also allows you to do what we call social discovery, which is to say, which is to say I'm interested in this stuff. I'm interested in interior design. I'm interested in recipes. I'm interested in, well, for me, I'm interested in cloud computing. And anyone who posts any stuff about those things, that information will then come up onto my Flipboard. And the thing I really like about Flipboard is how lovely it looks. It's not like scrolling and you need to put your glasses on all the time. Actually, you can just quickly flick through and see some really interesting information. For me now, this is my primary source of learning. This is where I do most of my what's new, what's coming out in terms of learning. Actually, Emma talked about clout earlier. Hands up who uses clout? A few of us. Cloud is a product, a piece of software that actually looks at our influence online, looks at our influence, and, our, and we're, we're measured from one to 100. 100 is kind of like Barack Obama. <laughs> <laughs> David Cameron's about 93. I'm not, allowed, I'm not sure allowed to say things like that. <laughs> and, uh, and, and we're kind of somewhere down in the middle or down the bottom. And what it's doing is it's not saying how often you tweet, therefore how popular you are. It's actually saying if you tweet, who retweets you and how influential are they? So it's a much more intelligent piece than just that I tweet, therefore I am. It looks across your platforms, it looks at LinkedIn and says, who are you connected to and how influential are they? And it's a really interesting one because actually you can use it and compare yourself to your competitors. No matter how big or how small you are, because it doesn't matter online. So clout's a really interesting one. But the reason, I, I'm not that vain that I check my clout score in the morning. The reason <laughs> I'm sharing with this, this with you now is that there's a brilliant little area in clout that allows you, again, it gives you social discovery. It comes up with ideas and tweets and information that other people have created. And it allows you to schedule straight from clout. And when you schedule, it gives you the most popular times of day where your tweets are seen. So you can sit there and just lie there and just say, this one's Tuesday at 4.30, this one's Wednesday at 2, whatever, whatever, and you can just schedule your week ahead. Social done. So that's cloud. At this point, I also check my heart. <laughs> it's already speeding up at this point. Does anyone use heart rate? We can show our, our camera, we can show our, 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 our camera to, to our faces. It scans our face and gives us our pulse. And I can tell you now that probably mine's about 150. <laughs> Hopefully yours isn't running quite so fast. But it's a really interesting one because actually you can start to see what your heart's doing in the day, how stressed you are, how not stressed you are, all of those sorts of things. So just share that one with you. So let's say I've got up now, I've had my breakfast, and we're just off to our first meeting. Has anyone used Triplog? This has changed my life. Triplog, you get in your car, you press start on your Triplog on your phone, you get to the end, you press stop, and it recognises how far you've gone through GPS, and it drops a line into your spreadsheet. So it creates your expense sheet. Wow. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and if you get a parking ticket thing, you know, not a parking ticket, um, the pay and display, um, you can take a photograph of it, it scans it, it recognises it, and adds it into your, into your spreadsheet as well. So at the end of the month, you've done all your expenses. It's fantastic. I love it. 
So let's say we've got to our first meeting and actually it's a breakfast meeting and someone said, oh, can you do a quick presentation, which happens quite a lot, doesn't it? Can you just quickly present what your company is all about? And does anyone use Evernote? Great. I'm a real fan of Evernote. This is my third iteration of trying Evernote. And actually, I'm at the point now when I quite like it <laughs> before it was kind of hard work. But the thing I love about Evernote is you can pull any PDF or any PowerPoint into it, and you can present straight from your phone, straight onto um, any screen. So has everyone got one of these? <laughs> oh, 20 quid. <laughs> goes into your iPhone one end and VGA the other end. So you can then project wow. off to any of those. Fantastic. And, and so you can do a quick presentation of, of whatever's, on, whatever's there. Also in Evernote, there's a fantastic app that allows you to scan business cards. So when you've been given some cards, and usually you tuck them into your pocket, and then the next time you wear that jacket, you go, oh, forgot to contact that person. <laughs> Instead of that, what you can do is take a, take a, a photo of it, scans it, it, look, it reads it, creates a contact in your phone, and finds them in LinkedIn and says, do you want to connect with them? So you press yes, and you've connected with them before you've left the meeting. It looks like you're efficient <laughs> for once in your life. It's a really lovely product. It also allows you to scan your notes. So if you've made notes, if you've done a post-it note or whatever, you can scan those notes, it will read it. And again, you can then make it a searchable document in your Evernote. So it's a really lovely, lovely thing to use. So finish the first meeting and then we're off to our next meeting. Does anyone use Google Now? This is kind of starting to, to come up. It's really popular in the States, and it's just about to really move over here. But it's the idea that it's pulling together, the Google app is pulling together your calendar, any bookings you've made, any plane tickets, any of that sort of stuff. It's pulling it all together and then predicting what you're doing next. <coughs> so if I, if, I was, if I had a meeting booked in the calendar, it would tell me how far I am away from that meeting, the directions to get there, and does it want me to be notified when I need to leave? And also, do I want to be notified if there's heavy traffic or if the traffic builds up, so I need to leave earlier? So it's starting to actually try and help you a bit, which is quite useful. And also, instead of having to go into Google Maps, in, Google, in the Google app, I can just press the microphone and just say, um, actually, tell me how to get to wherever I want to go to, and it will find it for me automatically, just through my voice recognition. And if, if you haven't played with Google's voice recognition recently, have a play with it, because it is incredible now. It's so fast. It's absolutely amazing. So my second meeting would be a, is a sales meeting. And, and, and we develop websites. So what I'd do is, is maybe someone, I've gone to a meeting about a website, and actually, they've done a little pretty picture. They've said, this is what we want the website to look like. They've drawn it out for me. And then I say to them, can I have that? And they go, no, that's mine. You can't have that piece of paper. So what you can use is an app called Skitch. Does anyone use Skitch? Brilliant app that allows you to take a photograph of something and draw on it. So simple, but, and so you can see there that I would draw, I would take a photo of their, their piece of paper, and then I can draw and add notes to it. You can use it for anything. I've seen landscape gardeners using it, and when they're with the client saying, let's take a photo of the garden, where did you want the pond? Want it there? Where do you want the fence? There. And having that conversation with the client and allowing you to build that at the same time. And the great thing about Skitch is that you can, it automatically works with Evernote. So you can save all of that stuff into your Evernote folder whilst you're on the go. It's also got a lovely other thing in it which allows you to do maps as well. So if you want to create a map and draw on it and say, these are the directions, you do it in Evernote and again, you can email it out to people. Does anyone use Cloud On? It's just been bought by Dropbox, so it's an interesting area. But Cloud On allows you to take notes, allows you to open any document, use it from any cloud service you've got. So if you're using a bit of Dropbox, a bit of Google Drive, you're using a bit of OneDrive, you've kind of got bits in all different places, you can pull it all together in Cloud On, you can open the document, and it has Microsoft Word and Excel built into it. So you can actually change things on the go and save them back into your Cloud On as well. It's a really lovely one. 
And who uses Google Forms? This is fantastic. It's free for all of us to use, and it's built into the, the actual Google app. Allows you to create a form for free. You can embed it on a website, or you can have an email address to it, and you can send it out to people, or you can keep it on your phone or your tablet and just type into it. So if you've got a sales group or if you're doing sales meetings, you want to keep it structured and you want the information the same, you can just fill it out on the go and it will just drop into your spreadsheet. I used uh, Google Form to organise my, all my girlfriends going skiing this year and we needed to know the size of everyone's boots, the size of everyone's shoes, how much they weighed, what their height was, what skis they wanted. Create a Google Form, get everyone to send to it, fill it all in. It's really easy to use. So, and it's free. This is a great one. And then say actually that we're with a client and they, they want to make a payment to us. And often what you end up saying is, well, actually, we can't take payment now. Can you send it to us or can you do something with it? And instead of that, has anyone got the PayPal here? Little, has anyone seen that one? This little device here. Do you want to play one of those? Yeah, they're selling really fast, selling like hot chips. Yeah, yeah, they're all the same, but this is the PayPal one. This is, well, it was £49. I think it's about £69 at the moment. <laughs> Allows you to take credit and debit card payments through your phone, through Bluetooth. So, I was just going to say, I've got iZettle. iZettle. Which is less than that. Yeah. Yeah, they're all iZettle, Square Card, Huddle Buy, lots of them out there. <laughs> The reason we use PayPal is just because it's a name that people recognise. That's, that's all for us, but whichever one you want to use. But they're a great ability to take payment there and then. And, um, and, and we've got you know, some people that we work with that actually, a painter and decorator is an example. He does the painting and decorating now, and whilst he's still on site, uses Xero, his, um, his accountancy app, to send the invoice out, and at the same time, takes payment. So what he's achieved there is reducing his payment tar credit cycle down to nothing. It's really clever. So have a look at those and see them around. That's a lot already in the morning. But let's say we're going out for lunch. <laughs> let's say we've gone to a new town and we don't know where we are. Um, and actually we want to find somewhere for lunch. Has anyone used the Wikitude app? Wikitude allows us to look at the area around us pulling from a database that already exists. So Google Places, who's in Google Places? Who's listed their business in Google Places? Does everyone know what I mean? The Google Maps, Google Business, that sort of thing, yeah. If you're in there, then you're already in Wikitude and you're already in augmented reality. So one of the things I would advise you to think about is check your reputation in Google Places. Check you've got some really good reviews on there check that you've got good photographs and good video and all of that good content on there. But anyway, so in Wikitude, we can look around us and we can see the nearest cafe, the nearest restaurant, whatever we want to look at. We can press on it. We can see all the information about them. We can see the reviews. We can click on it for our directions. We can click on it and, and make a phone call to them to book somewhere. It's a really quick way of finding your way around if you're new to an area. Over my sandwich, I realised that actually I need to do some more social media stuff in that day. I haven't done enough, I haven't created any new content. So I use an app called uh, WordSwag. Does anyone use WordSwag? This is one my daughter showed me. <laughs> it's a little bit young for me, but I think it's a great one. What it allows you to do is use your photographs that's on your phone and to put some lovely text, some stylized text on top of it. And the stylized bit is already done for you. You just change the words. So actually, for people who have zero creativity like myself, it can actually make it look like you've got, you can do something quite cool. And the great thing about stuff like this is it's really shareable content. If you're sharing it out on social media, people will share it, whether it's funny or emotional or whatever it is in that space. So word swag is a great one. And that's the end of my day. I got bored at that point. <laughs> so going home, one of the things I didn't talk about in Google now is, again, through your voice recognition, you can say to it, remind me when I go past Tesco's to go and pick up some coriander 
or remind me on my way home to pick up my daughter. <laughs> so I don't forget her. <laughs> Whatever it is that I need to do. And it will automatically send me a notification at the right time in the right location. So Google Now is great for that. And I, and I wanted to end by talking about Audible. Does anyone use Audible? It's my favourite app, so I had to put it in here. If you like reading or you don't have time to read, Audible is fabulous to get through the books that you want to because it's an audio book service. Um, and there's loads of other ones out there. I'm not promoting it as a service, but I just wanted to talk about that one as well. That one keeps me happy doing my long journeys as I drive around. And sometimes I hang around in a car park just to get to the end of, <laughs> end of a chapter. Can you download books to that? Or can that, does that read from your Kindle? Or it, you download books to it, but it's only audible books. It's not reading books. So you download books to it, and it's a subscription service, and you, I download one a month. Sometimes I have to download more, depending on my journeys. So that's the sort of thing that you can use. Oh, I haven't used that one. I'll have to try that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. So, so, yeah, so what I've tried to do there is just to give you some thoughts, some ideas around ways in which we can embrace the technology we've got in our pockets already um, to work more efficiently, to work in line in the day. Because one of the things I've realised is it saved me time in the evenings. But I don't have to do some of my paperwork in the evenings because I've done it on the go. So I just wanted to share some of those bits with you. So that's the end of my bit. Oh no, forgot about this, sorry. Has anyone used the Dulux visualiser tool? This is brilliant. So you're at home and you want to sort of, you're thinking about changing the colour of your walls. If you show the Dulux Visualizer your walls, you choose the colour from the Dulux palette and it changes the wall for you. <laughs> it's great. So it's, it's a really interesting one because you don't have to do the samples anymore. <laughs> you can try it, change it, you can change to whatever colour you want and it's the actual Dulux um, palette that's available for you. And I've just remembered because the last one I wanted, oh yeah, uh, this is the last one I wanted to end on. Has anyone used the L'Oreal Genius? <laughs> it is hilarious. And I was going to do a live demo, but I feel a bit nervous about doing it now because I, I, I put it this one instead. But it's really interesting. There is a serious side to this because there's a really interesting thing around augmented reality and this kind of change of the world that we're in and the overlay of, of, of digital to the world. But what this allows you to do is show your face to to, um, to the L'Oreal app, choose the makeup, the colour of the lipstick, the eyeshadow, the mascara, the blusher, and it puts it on your face. And if you move it to someone else's face, it puts it on their face. <laughs> it's party central, isn't it? You can see what happens. But it's a really interesting one. And actually, what is interesting is you can see this stuff. You know, when you go into a makeup counter and you have to put it on your hand, you can actually see it on your face. So it's, a, it's an interesting one. And I just put at the end of the day, check my heart again. Because <laughs> after that sort of day, who knows what your heart's like. <laughs> there we go. So that's the end of what we're doing. Right, so I, I hope that that was kind of quite interesting and just give you a flavour of some of the things that we're doing in, in Devon and Somerset, really, and, and, and some of the ways in which we're trying to not just support women, but actually try to inspire them to, to, to try stuff more. Um, and what I wanted to do now, I'm just checking on time, yeah, I'm okay. What I wanted to do now is kind of introduce um, Anita and Claire to you and to um, help them to talk about their journeys that they've had um, in digital and why they love digital as well. So, if I can get you, Anita, to introduce yourself first. Yes, certainly. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Anita Corbin and um, I'm a photographer. And I've been in the Somerset area, Devon Somerset area, for about... 18 years now. I'm born and bred a Londoner, so it's great coming back to the city. And um, we're lucky enough to have a very supportive business network within the Somerset region. Thank you. Thank you, Nita. And Claire? Hello, um, I'm Claire Bragg. Um, I'm a farmer and I'm from South Pelleton in Somerset, so a tiny little village. Um, rearing chicken, growing potatoes into renewables, so technology, surprisingly, is, is, is a huge thing on the farm. Great, thank you. I've got some, I've written down some stuff here to get, get some, some thoughts into here. So the first question I wanted to ask you was, um, why did you adopt digital into your business, Anita? 
Uh, well, as a photographer um, for 35 years, obviously I've been brought up in with the wet process, the analog process, and um, I clung quite uh, dearly to that actually for a long, long time because I didn't feel that the digital quality was good enough. And it was probably only about 10 years ago that we decided, my partner and I decided that we had to take the plunge into digital, uh, mainly because the clients were demanding, um, demanding it and they want the pictures you know, immediately as soon as they're shot now. And uh, also there's a, a very good um, cost saving in digital. You know, there's no film, there's no processing, there's no printing. So from the client's point of view, you know, we had to go digital in order to be competitive within the market. But we waited, we hung on until it was, we felt it was absolutely, um, the quality was good enough to continue our reputation. Great, thank you. And the same for you, Claire. Um, farming is a, is a very different industry in respect that we don't tell our customer how much we're going to charge for what we've produced. Our ultimate customer tells us. So we've got to find every way possible to make cost savings. So for us, the biggest cost savings we can do is be use better technology, make things work for us, and make our process a lot quicker and more efficient. So we've been kind of, again, market-led into to looking at technology to make things easier for us. Great, thank you. Um, and what's your favourite use of technology in your business? Oh, well, that's a, that's a big question because, I mean, photography now, although there is some analogue photography around still, I'd say there's only a handful of labs in London where you can use analogue. So that gives you an idea that actually our field of creativity is, is largely digital. And um, I have a Super 6 that I use when I'm on location. And that would be um, a compass on my iPhone. I mean, nothing compared to all those apps that you've showed us. I feel I'm in the sort of foothills of the Everest of <laughs> IT at the moment. But, um, yeah, the compass, the BBC Weather and Google Maps is what I'd say I use mainly on shoots. Just to be able to instantly get your you know, location, find out what the weather's going to be like, what angle the sun's going to be at, what time of day... Um, then for my um, kind of creative notebook, I'm getting into Instagram, which I was a little bit resistant about because as a photographer, you're very conscious of everything that you put out there as an image is going to be judged as a photograph. And of course, now everyone's photographing everything 24-7. Mm -hmm. so, um, but I'm getting more into Instagram. My Facebook page for First Women UK, which is my sort of major project that's going on at the moment, is the resource that I sort of spread the word about the project where I'm where I am who I'm photographing and that has a cascade effect which I must say I haven't set up myself but I do have people women that can do that sort of thing um, down into in, into the uh, Twitter feed and then the, the LinkedIn and the other thing which I've just found out about is iBooks um, which is a PDF uh, reader that is very useful when you're out on location you want to show somebody the kind of work that you're doing um, so that's my Super 6, Photographer Super 6. But once I get the images back home into the computer, I use um, a program called Lightroom, which is a much more intuitive program than Photoshop. And I use it to edit all the work. You know, we sometimes I'm shooting a 1,000 images a day, which is crazy. But, you know, you need to be able to process those images quickly and in batches. And um, the editing process is such an important part of the creative process that it needs to be done as a, intuitively as possible, I'd right. say. Thank you. And Lightroom is a cloud product? Lightroom, sorry, yeah, Lightroom. <laughs> Last week, <laughs> my husband bought me his camera for Christmas. Unfortunately, we didn't have a computer power plant enough to uh, run it, so last week I had to go and buy me a computer, <laughs> which was rather good. <laughs> but then we decided that um, you couldn't buy the software anymore uh, on a disk or however they used to sell it, so we had to go cloud-based. So we now have a cloud-based software, which enables you to update naturally and without having to you know, buy more stock. Um, and it's the sort of thing that I, it freaks me out trying to update. So that's John's department. He does all the updates. Um, but of course, now with cloud, it's a, it's a, it's a natural resource. Great. And Anita, can you talk a little bit about your first women project as well? Oh, OK, yeah. It was, um, <clears throat> as I said, I've been a photographer all my life, 35 years, can't do anything else. That's what I do. Um, I've always been interested in images of women, positive images of women, photographing um, <coughs> girls in subcultures in the 80s, which is now coming back up into um, the public eye. But uh, about eight years ago, well, no, six years ago, as I was approaching my 50th birthday, I felt um, I wanted to do a project that would be 
uh, my legacy project. So I kept hearing about women in the news becoming first, first woman to uh, row across the Indian Ocean. She was my first woman. And I decided that I wanted to create a collection of photographic portraits to um, mark this moment in time as we move towards 100 years of women getting the vote. And um, I've done, I'm on my, I'll be doing number 70 next week, so that's, that's nearly to the 100. And I hope to um, have secured an exhibition launch from London out into the whole of the UK, travel the show around 100 portraits of iconic women to inspire the next generation of, of uh, iconic women. And um, if you go onto my website, you'll be able to see what's going on and also uh, find out how you can get involved, suggesting first, but also to involve your uh, photographic archives from under the bed and in the drawers of your female ancestors that we'd like to <coughs> write stories on. Great. Thank you, Anita. I'd like to ask the same to you, Claire. So what, what's your favourite use of digital in your business? Um, I suppose, to be honest with you, it, it's, it's not something that's in, in the everyday use. It's, it's the digital we use for our chicken houses. We rear chicken for meat. Um, and it's the use of providing the, the best environment for our chicken. So the, the technology there will create the, the right temperatures, the right humidity, the feed, the water, the whole lot, and monitor everything. And that is also so that we've got it so our engineer can dial into it wherever he is in the country, dial in and check that everything's all right for us. So we've got a nice backup there. We also run a, um, our heating system for the chickens. Was, we're honoured that we were the first in the country to actually put a, a biomass wood chip boiler in, which produces hot air for our chickens, which is, is a lovely environment rather than a, a, a colour gas type environment for the chickens. And again, we, through using TeamViewer, TeamViewer app, we can log into our biomass wood chip boiler and just see what's happening. So if we get a, an alarm call to say that the temperature's gone down, we can log in to look, see what the, the, the wood chip boiler is doing. If there's a problem there, if it's a fault there, we need to get back quickly, whether we need to get back to the chicken. So it's all that side and the chicken side. Um, technology in the tractors, the tractors are so advanced, I can't profess to be very good at them, but everybody else on the farm, thankfully, is. There's a GPS technology, um, an auto-guidance system, so the guys drive the tracks in, <laughs> drive around the field, so the field is mapped using GPS, and then they can, they can work the field in the most efficient way. So there is efficiency for time, for diesel, for, um, for seed usage, and also um, for the soil. The soil is our biggest, greatest asset. Without good soil, we can't produce good food. And if you can picture on what we call the headland, so the outside of the field, if you're turning really tightly on it because you've got to come straight back in, in on yourself to create the best lines, that headland is, is getting compacted. It's getting a real bashing. So if you can go at one line, go halfway down the field, come back down, do all sorts of lovely shapes, but the guidance within the tractor is telling you you're protecting your valuable asset of the soil. So it's those little bits of technology we've got in the farm that makes life a lot, lot easier for us. From another app, I have to say our bank app. <laughs> <laughs> so I know where we are on the bank every day. It's just bits and pieces that we're jumping in. A bit like Anita, the weather. The weather is extremely important, Ooh. which I'm sure you can all appreciate. So we will know when we were um, harvesting potatoes. We managed it last year. We had one big field, a 20-acre field, that we started at 8 o'clock in the morning. Normally, we'd finished maybe 8 o'clock at night. Um, but the weather was changing the next day, which we found on the app. So we worked yeah. through to 2 o'clock in the morning. That day, we did our record for 400 tonnes of potatoes <laughs> harvested, <laughs> braided into store one day. So <laughs> without yeah, that technology, yeah. Yeah. we Great. couldn't have done it. So, yeah, Thank you. it's a huge part. Um, one of the benefits of using digital, and I'm sure everyone's in this room is, would explain this as well, that, that one of the benefits of using digital is around extending your reach, um, that we don't have to operate just locally. Um, can you tell me any ways in which digital for you has extended your reach? Well, I just mentioned a little bit about Visible Girls. If you, if you Google search my name, Anita Corbin, Visible Girls, you will find uh, that BuzzFeed did an article on um, my project on girls and subcultures from the 1980s, early 80s. And that was last June, and I've had around about 160,000 hits on that. 
And because I'm actually searching for those girls to come back and re-photograph them as women in their 50s now, because they were like in their teens. And uh, about 15 of the girls, the original visible girls, have been in contact with me from Australia, America, France, Europe, Scotland. And hopefully this year we'll be getting together and doing a revisited visible girls and finding out about their lives as women over the last 35 years. Now, I could never have achieved that even maybe 10 years ago because of the whole <coughs> you know, connectivity of the world now is... is a, it's just a phenomenal. And one, I mean, one thing that happened, I, I did my um, thesis in 1983 in West Sumatra, and I was studying the matrilineal culture in West Sumatra, photographing the women involved there. And uh, one of their grandchildren got in touch with me on Facebook. Now, I don't think I ever met his <laughs> child, but obviously Amazing. my photograph is probably still there somewhere. So, you know, Facebook is a, is a fantastic resource for connecting with the world at large and, um, you know, and even to do FaceTime across the world where, you know, if you've got clients abroad, you can actually talk to them whilst you're doing a shoot in the studio. Um, I have two, I have my twins that are at university, they're 21 next month. They are able to FaceTime my dad, who's going to be 100 this year, in his nursing home. And I mean, to have that kind of, you know, connectivity and use it to bring people together um, and, and use it without any worry of, of, you know, not getting it right. Just try it out. Just do it. Brilliant. Thank you. And the same question to you. How, <laughs> how has it extended your reach? Um, I've been very, very fortunate within the, the farming community. There's a, a, a scholarship programme called the Nuffield Scholarship Farming Trust, um, which gave me the opportunity to go off and, and study um, chicken around the world. And this time last year, <laughs> as, as you do. <laughs> um, I was going to keep a straight face. Oh, no, you should have done. <laughs> and this time last year, I was actually doing a, a month's tour of Australia, Tasmania, New Zealand and America. And when I was in Tasmania, I was taking photos on my iPad, which through iCloud is connected with my husband's um, telephone. And I went into a chicken house and, and the, the owner showed me a, a wonderful little hand-drawn cultivator just to keep the chicken knit and nice and dry, friable and everything. By the time I got home, my husband had made one. <laughs> 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 so it, it's just the connection and, and keep it going. And I had an email even today from an Australian scholar wanting to catch up with me when she's over here. So, yeah, it's, it's Thank you. easy. Thank you. My final question is around, actually, what tips would you give to other women um, about <coughs> using technology in their businesses? Well, definitely collaborate with other women because you cannot possibly know everything. And women are really great at collaborating. And, you know, we're so lucky to have Kate and Cosmic down in our neck of the woods because you think, you know, we're a country bumpkins down there. We wouldn't <laughs> be able to have such high-quality training. But, you know, there's so much you can learn from other women that are specialists in their fields. And, um, yeah, just... Just don't, you know, believe in what you do, believe in yourself, uh, ask, ask questions. There's nothing, there's nothing, there's, such, there's no such thing as a silly question. You know, everybody's got the same queries and worries. And um, yeah, don't, yeah, try not to be intimidated by technology, I think. Mm. You know, just have a, have a go. What's the worst that can happen? Um, I think I would say, yeah, don't be frightened. Use it. There's plenty of people you can turn to. Um, Things change, things move on. So rather than missing one or two or three updates and going for a huge update, just do them gradually and then it's not such a big change all the time. Great. Thank you very much. <laughs> Have we got time for any questions? <laughs> very banal question. What's your Twitter handle? Cosmicated. Cosmic cated. <laughs> Cosmicated. Yeah. Cosmicated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 any others? You, you mentioned the little um thing that you plug into your phone, your iPhone, and you can sort of project straight off of it. Yeah. Do they make those for Android? Do you know? <laughs> what a question. I, th I think they must do. I think they must do. And they also do the VGA version and also the HDMI, so you can plug into TVs as well. So ladies, instead of having a, instead of having a makeup bag, <laughs> you all need a gadget bag. <laughs> With all your gadgets in it. <laughs> so you're always ready. <laughs> Any, yes, lady up there. Listed a large number of different applications, many of which uh, cross refer to one another. Has anybody looked at what the optimum number of applications you might use before you're actually spending more time on your applications? Than <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. 
good question. But what I can say <laughs> is that one of the things I try and do is I try and download about three apps a week, and then I usually delete three apps a week. <laughs> so what I try and do is just try, delete, fail, try, and just keep going with them, because there are so many amazing ones out there. Um, but then sometimes you try it and actually like it, and then you just don't use it. So just delete it. Don't be afraid to. Yeah. Can I just ask, please, you mentioned that on clouds you can schedule yeah. social media posts. Yeah. Does that replace Hootsuite? It kind of does for me, personally. In our office, we still use Hootsuite as a desktop application, but for my personal one, I tend to use, I tend to use Clout now. Okay, yeah. Mm. Any other questions? Yeah. Kate, can I ask where the ethical comes in? You can, of course. Yeah, so we, we're a social enterprise. So we're an IT company, woman-led IT company, and, um, and we're a social enterprise. So any, any profits we make in our business, we reinvest into helping other people to make the most of technology. So we do lots of workshops and lots of activity in helping anyone of any age who wants to be included in the digital age. So, yeah, that's what we do. Thank you. Any other questions? No? Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you to Anita and to Claire. Thank you.